evening, and welcome to our weekly virtual broadcast here at Crazy Faith Ministries. Thank you for joining with us today, and always, even through this virtual space, we feel your presence and we are grateful for you being here with us. We are entering into the second wave of this coronavirus pandemic, and the COVID numbers in Ohio are rapidly rising. With the holiday season around the corner, if you plan on having holiday gatherings, we encourage you to follow both the state and the CDC guidelines to ensure that everyone stays safe. We can beat this pandemic, but we have to stay vigilant and not let our guard down. In a time when normalcy has been snatched away from us, people are dying, losing their jobs and their homes. It can feel like God is not among us. It can feel like God has abandoned us, but we need to hold steadfast to our belief that God is all around. He has never left us. He will never forsake us. And everywhere that we look, his love surrounds us.
Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before God's presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is God that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are God's people and the sheep of God's pasture. So enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter into God's courts with praise. Be thankful unto God and bless God's holy name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and God's truth endures to all generations. Praise ye the Lord. And now we pray the prayer that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ taught us to pray. When his disciples asked him, Lord, how do you pray? And he answered, you pray like this. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Hallowed be thy name. On earth, on earth, as it is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. On earth, on earth, as it is in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Give us this day our daily bread, hallowed be thy name. Give us this day our daily bread, hallowed be thy name. And forgive us all of our trespasses, hallowed be thy name. As we forgive those who trespass against us, hallowed be thy name. And lead us not into temptation, hallowed be thy name. But deliver us from all that is evil, hallowed be thy name. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, hallowed be thy name. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, hallowed be thy name. Amen, amen, it must be so, hallowed be thy name. Amen, amen, it must be so, hallowed be thy name. Amen, amen, it must be so, hallowed be thy name. Amen, amen, it must be so, hallowed be thy name. Good evening, Crazy Faith. Today's scripture readings come from Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 4 through 10, and Mark chapter 3, verses 19 through 27. Again, those verses are Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 through 10, and Mark chapter 3, verses 19 through 27. I will be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Let us hear from the Word of God. Jeremiah 1. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. And then I said, O oh Lord God, truly I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am only a boy. For you shall go to all to whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them. For I am with you to deliver you, saith the Lord. And then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. 
See, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to pluck up and to pull down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. Mark chapter 3, starting at verse 19. Then he went home, and the crowd came together again so that they could not even eat. When his family heard it, they went out to restrain him. For people were saying, he has gone out of his mind. And the scribes who came down from Jerusalem said, he has Beelzebul. And by the ruler of the demons, he cast out demons. And he called them to him and spoke to them in parables. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand, but his end has come. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his property without first tying up the strong man. Then indeed the house can be plundered. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God, we thank you for your power to call us out of our comfort zones, out of ourselves to do great work for you. We thank you, God, that before you, we knew ourselves, before we had any concept of who we were, you knew us and you knew what you had shaped us to be who you shaped us to be and the, the, the work that you equipped us to do. So God, we pray that your spirit would go forth today in our service, God. We pray that your spirit would speak to those parts of us that you knit together in our mother's womb to do your work, that you energize those parts, God. Give us a new revelation on how to best serve you and love you and love your people. Be with us today, God. Let your spirit fall fresh. We invite you in, God, and we give you permission to have your way. Change us, that way we may continue to change the world. We thank you and we praise you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.
Good afternoon. I'm glad to, to see all of you. Of course, I can't see you, but in my spirit, I see you. And I'm sure you're rejoicing uh, that uh, Joe Biden has been declared the president-elect of this country. We still need to pray. We still need to pray and work. Our work is never over because the current president is, you know, acting like the current president. But this is what I want you to do. If you have friends and family in Georgia, I want you to be sure to tell them if they have not registered to register, they can check the Georgia Secretary of State site to see when the deadline is. Tell them to register. If they have absentee balloting, tell them to, to, um, to, to take advantage of that. Because the only thing that's worse than the president is the, the House Speaker, the Majority House Leader, Mitch McConnell. And if uh, we can get uh, two more Democratic senators in the Senate, then we'll be able to shut him down, which we need to do because he doesn't have anybody's interest in heart but his own. So tell your friends and family and tell them to tell their friends and family to register to vote and let's do this. I also want to encourage you, if you haven't already, to buy this book. This is my latest, latest book with Liberty and Justice for Some, uh, the Bible, the Constitution and Racism in America. It is so appropriate for what we're going through right now and I'm willing to do... Um, book parties, you know, virtual book parties and discussions. We're trying to plan that stuff now, but I hope you'll buy it. You can go to the to the publisher, Judson Press, or you can go to Amazon. Amazon. I don't do Amazon so much anymore, but you can get it at Amazon or Barnes & Noble or any bookseller. So I hope that you'll buy it. I would love to hear your input, and I would love for us to have some conversations about it. So please, if you can, please do. So pray with me for a few minutes on the subject. Let the prophets come. Let the prophets come. From biblical days to the present, God has called upon and has needed the prophets. They have been called when God's people have gone astray. And we are always going astray. When God's people have turned away from God to their own devices and to their own gods. Yet, in spite of, and, and in spite of claiming to worship the God of Abraham, our people, the Israelites, frequently put other gods before Yahweh in direct violation of the first commandment of the Decalogue. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. You shall have no other gods before me. In spite of Yahweh being really clear about what was required of those who claimed to worship him, people messed up all of the time. They did in fact have other gods and they frequently displaced Yahweh, putting Yahweh on the sidelines but not out of the picture altogether, almost as, as their deuce card, you know, in case the game of life they were playing did not go their way. Israel was frequently unfaithful to God and it caused God some pain as well as anger. God, said the late Rabbi Abraham Heschel, was the, quote, most moved mover, deeply affected by human deeds, end quote. God was not and is not detached. When God's people suffer, God suffers as well. There is an emotional entanglement between us and God. God suffers when we hurt, so when we hurt other people, we are, in essence, hurting God. And I know I've shared this short story with you before, but it's out of the Midrash when the Israelites were rejoicing when the Red Sea or the Sea of Reeds collapsed over the Egyptians and they were collapsing and God said, don't do that. Those are my children too. God hurts when we hurt. God cares for us. But God could tell by the way we acted and treated each other that we did not care for each other as God knew we should. It bothered God that we did not understand that need, you know, that requirement of being one of God's children. Heschel, Dr. King, Reverend C.T. Vivian, Reverend Barber, and so many others said that, quote, religion without indignation as at political evils was impossible. Heschel said, quote, to speak about God, back then, you know, and be silent on Vietnam is blasphemous. And I would say today to to speak about God and be silent about uh, police brutality or the pandemic, it's blasphemous. The opposite of good is not evil, Heschel said. The opposite of good is indifference. We have to care about each other even when we don't want to or when such caring takes us away from our comfort zones. Our humanity depends upon our comfort compassion. That's what Heschel said. So I thought about that this week as I have watched the events of the past week. The election was won 
by the former Vice President Joe Biden and his running mate, Senator Kamala Harris. That should have been the end of the ongoing chaos and confusion that has been caused by the current president and the GOP. But instead, the chaos has actually increased. And because this man is so unpredictable, many people are having to manage their uneasiness of what he may do in order to steal the election and hold on to power, even as he says that that's what the Democrats are doing. We have all known this was his plan since he started talking about the election being rigged months ago. But now, here we are, and it is not a comfortable place in which to be. But many people are angry. People are angry at what the last four years have wrought. And people are angry that this president has been enabled in his actions by lawmakers who claim to be patriots, but who are actively supporting the subversion of this country in plain sight. People danced in the streets last Saturday, but now many of those same people are finding themselves all wound up again as they wait for the term of this man to be over with, for him to leave Washington and his voice and tweets never be heard or repeated again. And smack dab in the center of this anger is the divine mandate that we should love our neighbors as ourselves that we should love the Lord our God with all our hearts and all our minds and all our souls and our neighbors as ourselves, and, and we are not having it. It is it If it is true that our humanity depends upon our compassion, as Heschel said, for many of us, our humanity is at risk because we're tired and we want them, all of them, beginning with the president and going on down the line to get what they have given out. We want that. We are, as God's people, sorely tested right now. There are people who, who practice bigotry of all sorts openly, as a rule, even as they claim to be Christian, and they don't seem to be concerned about their humanity. In fact, they believe that their stances, their positions on who is a real American and who is not, those positions are ordained by God. This is not a new thing. It has been operative since the inception of this country. The pilgrims believed God sanctioned their genocide of Native Americans and, of course, that God intended for black people to be enslaved. They never seemed to think that they were in danger of offending God um, by the way they treated the others or by what they said to them. And the thought of loving them? was out of the question, and they said so. But they would tell you in a minute that God understood and that God was on their side. They are convinced and have always been convinced that they are right, and they do not think. They do not think that God cares if they hurt other people because of their beliefs, either by what they say, what they do, or by what laws and policies they pass and support that end up hurting so many people. Some, let's call them people with a, a prophetic heart, are saying that those who have been hurt should show mercy. Let me say that again. They are saying that those who have been hurt should show mercy and compassion to those who have hurt them. And many being told that are steadfastly rejecting the suggestion. They, they say do it, the prophetic heart people. They say do it because you believe in Jesus or do it because you believe in God and God is love. And so if you believe in God and God is love, then you must do love. You must be love. But there are many people who do not want to hear it and who have no intention of showing love or mercy to anyone who has supported a president who has done nothing but hurt them. Case in point, a Jewish atheist woman who is the mother of a disabled child wrote in the Huffington Post this week that she has no intentions of forgiving or understanding the president or his supporters. She criticized their openly racist remarks, their dismissal and demonization of the Black Lives Matter movement, their detention of children of immigrant parents in cages unfit for human occupancy, their dismissal and approval of violence perpetrated by white supremacists and more. She went down the line. She called out his drive to dismantle the Affordable Care Act in this time of pandemic. She called out his Islamophobia, his transphobia, his xenophobia, his homophobia, and, and, and his anti-Semitism, and all the things he did to keep his base satisfied while totally ignoring and stomping on the needs of everybody else. She said, quote, indifference, 
in the face of such cruelty does not deserve understanding now or ever. Some fences, she said, cannot be mended. Those who supported Trump and those who remained neutral in the face of such cruelty enabled him. I will not forget, and I certainly will not forgive, end quote. And there was that word again spoken of by Rabbi Heschel, indifference. The reason we are where we are in this country today is that too many people, too often people have been indifferent because it's just safer to be quiet and therefore indifferent than to invest courage and faith and hope in the situations which seem to have no easy answer. The senators who have been and who are remaining silent, enabling this man to destroy this country, have been indifferent because it has been easier than taking a stand and, of course, safer for them in terms of them protecting their political careers. But in different times and difficult times, in times when God and God's will are being pushed further and further to the side, God calls the prophets. A prophet is not a soothsayer, one who foretells the future. A prophet is one who seeks to make people see what God sees. A prophet sees corruption and talks about it. A prophet goes to the slums and sees the rampant poverty there and talks about it. Prophets are horrified by what they see because instinctively they know that it is not God's will. Prophets see injustice in all its forms, in government, government corruption, corporate corruption, exploitation of the poor, and they just cannot sleep. They cannot keep quiet. They cannot rest because they can feel how the inequity in the world, the injustice is tipping the scale far too away, far away, too far one way, causing way too many people to suffer. Prophets see people who say they love God walk away from God and toward the idols of this world. Prophets see the effects of people putting money before God and how materialism seduces people to do the things they might never have thought they would have done. Heschel says that prophecy is the voice God has lent to the silent agony, a voice to the plundered poor, to the profane riches of the world. It is a form of living, a crossing point of God and men. God is raging in the prophet's words, end quote. God is raging. Many of us ignore any talk about prophets because we believe that God only calls some people to be prophets. We are very comfortable to go to a church service and sit in a pew and listen to whatever they're going to sing and what the pastor is going to preach and go home. They think that prophets are somehow special, different, more strong, more intelligent, closer to God than they. But if the truth be told, prophets are simply people who care enough about God to listen to and for God and to address the injustices that they see, period. Prophets can be nationally known, internationally known, locally known, or even known just in their own neighborhoods and homes. Everyone who says they love God has a place inside of them that responds to the voice, the pull, and the prodding of God. Not everyone chooses to heed or pay attention to what they feel from God, but the prodding is there in every single person. God calls the prophets when people are being unfaithful to God, which is frequently. Because God knows the people need to see God in the flesh, and even though the humans who accept their prophetic call are not God, people can perceive that they represent the word and the will of God. They may not listen to or abide by what the prophet has said, but when the prophet before them has spoken, they know that they have been given a dose of something spiritually serious. They know that God has seen them and heard them and that God does not like what God has seen. They know that their indifference has bothered and is bothering God, and they shudder. They don't want to hear it. They cannot unknow, though, what the prophet has made them know, what the prophet has made them see. What they do with it is up to them. But let's go back a minute to this thing about people thinking prophets are somehow better, higher, more than the average person. Let me say it again. God calls anyone God pleases. In this chapter of Jeremiah that we read today in the scripture part of our service, God says, quote, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations, end quote. So let's stop there and make this the first point of this sermon. God 
calls us before God formed us in our mother's womb. We have all been called. To know us before we were formed is to say that God was intimately connected to us spiritually before our humanness was made manifest. God's spirit traverses all over us, always. God sees what we cannot see, and God whispers to us before we can hear. God sends God's spirit to us before we know what spirit is. The truth is, God calls us all, not just to be born and to live our lives, but to be the feet and the eyes and the ears and the strength of God. God depends upon us and breathes on us and in us and expects us to do, to do more than just survive, but to exist for the plans and purposes of God. You can think you're off the hook because you think that there are some people who God passes over, but there is not a single one who is passed over. All of us are called before we are formed in our mother's wombs. God invests in us before we are born. But let's go on. Jeremiah, hearing God say this to him, offers excuses. Um, he says, then I said, oh, Lord God, truly, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a boy. But the Lord stops him. The Lord said to me, he says, do not say I am only a boy, for you shall go to all whom I send you, and you shall speak whatever I command you, end quote. This leads me to the second point of this sermon, which is, do not minimize your voice because God has given you all you need. We are good at putting ourselves down and therefore moving ourselves away from places and responsibilities for which we have been equipped by God. God doesn't care about how the world has labeled you. God doesn't care if you stutter, if you are blind or deaf. God doesn't care if you are not an honor student or if you didn't go to college. God doesn't care about your weight or your height. God doesn't care about your race or your ethnicity. God has put inside of all of us all that we need to do God's work. We put ourselves down, but God lifts us up. And the more we allow ourselves to be lifted, the higher God takes us. God doesn't need your voice to be like somebody else's. God doesn't need for you your public recognition to be like anyone else's. God needs for what God put in you to shine and to, again, be the eyes and the voice in the presence of God. God doesn't care if you call yourself a believer. God is concerned with you being a believer. In this part of the verses that we're reading, Jeremiah's eyes must have grown big, a sign that he did not believe in himself or that he could do or say anything against or to the people to whom God was sending him. But God said, do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you. In other words, God doesn't send us out to the wolves without a covering. That doesn't mean we won't get battered around some, but God is with us. That's why so many people who have fought for justice have made it through. In spite of horrendous treatment by the law, God's delivering power is unquestionable, and God wants the prophet to know that God is with him all of the time. Then God seals the deal by putting out his hand and touching Jeremiah's mouth. He says, now I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over the nations and over kingdoms, end quote, which is the third point. God has already put God's hand on your mouth. God has put in you all that you are to say. You are not alone. God is doing a new thing in you. It says it in the book of Isaiah. Do you not see it? Now it springs forth. God has put in every one of us a new thing parts of ourselves that we do not see and in which we do not believe, but it is there. And why is it there? Because God needs the prophets. God needs those who will walk toward the darkness in order to bring the light. God needs the prophets who carry the love of God in their hearts and who believe that the word and the will of God are stronger than the powers and principalities which are fighting against God every single day. God needs the prophets who will remind others that God is in control, not Donald Trump, not the U.S. Senate, not Mitch McConnell or Matt Gates, or Nancy Pelosi or Chuck Schumer or Lindsey Graham or Kevin McCarthy or the press secretary or the newspapers or the television. God needs the prophets who will remind people that truth is stronger than lies any day and that truth crushed to the ground will rise again every single time. 
God needs prophets who will remind people that weeping endures for at night, but that joy comes in the morning, and that morning always comes. God needs prophets who will remind people to lift up their eyes to the hills from whence comes their help. God needs prophets who pray without ceasing so that the other prophets who are held captive right now by an addiction will work their way toward God and be set free. God needs prophets who are willing to go on to the battlefields of injustice and remind those who are already there that David slew Goliath with with one of his five smooth stones and that their stone is God Almighty who is bigger than white supremacy and racism and AR-47s and a corrupt political culture. God needs prophets who will go into the lion's dens of injustice and fight the lions with God in front of them and thus bring those in power to a new place. God needs prophets who will remind people that there ain't but one God. And it isn't the the Mitch or Giuliani or McCarthy or any of them. God needs prophets who will tell people who think God doesn't love them because the church and church people treat them poorly, that the people in the church are wrong. That to quote my mentor, Reverend Dr. Samuel DeWitt Proctor, the late Reverend Dr. Samuel DeWitt Proctor, that everybody is somebody in God's eyes. Um, God needs prophets who will risk going to jail so that others can be set free. God needs prophets who will tell women that they matter in spite of a sexist country and world which has told them otherwise. God needs prophets who will walk in the steps of ancestors who refuse to back down, back up, or stand down. God needs prophets. God needs prophets who remind people that we have all come too far to sit down in a saucer now. God needs prophets who will remind people that Jesus said that a house divided against itself cannot stand, that Satan cannot cast out Satan, but that Satan needs a soldier or an army of God to cast him out. God needs prophets to be bold enough to name the Satans in their lives, in their homes, in their government that are threatening the will of God. God needs prophets to remind people that God's house is a strong house and that if they want to destroy that which God has brought to pass, they will have to go through them first. God needs prophets who will say, we have come too far. Ain't going to let nobody or nothing turn us around. Do you all feel me? Do you feel me? If so, hear me. Let the prophets come. Let those who have never come forward before come now. We might have won this election, but we have not won the fight. Trumpism is alive and well. It is as toxic a presence as was Nazism. We cannot sit down and be still and act like everything is okay. It is not. Let the prophets come who will help gather God's people and speak truth to them. Let the prophets come who will walk in the light of God and get others to do the same. Let the prophets come who will refuse to be manipulated manipulated by money or ambition or ignorance. Let the prophets come who will stand up for justice for all of God's children. Let the prophets come who will remind us that we are not allowed to sit on the side and let injustice and bigotry and hatred continue to contaminate the world. We have come too far. Too many people have worked so that we could be here on this day. This is God's world, not any human being. So let the prophets come who will honor God and God's creation and be the eyes and be the ears and be the spirit of God and and, and and honor all of us, all of us, including ourselves, our children and our children yet to come. Let the prophets come. And I think when we do that, we get a sense of peace. We will get a sense of peace in spite of everything not being perfect. There is a song called Blessed Assurance, and I'm going to play it for you now so that we can hear it and be um encouraged as we go through this week. Let's listen. Singing that hard time. They get it. They get it. 
that's what we do. We will praise our Savior. We will be the prophets. We will walk into the light. We will walk into the fire. We will walk where we need to walk and let people know that the God we serve is real and that we intend, we intend to attend to the agony of God. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, thank you for this week. Thank you for the joy and even thank you for the worry that we might feel right now. Remind us, Lord God, that we are the prophets, that we have the power in us, that God consecrated us even before we were formed in our mother's wombs. Remind us, Lord God, that on each one of us there is a, 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 a hand, a divine hand, and the presence of the Holy Spirit, which will give us what we need to make this world as God wants it to be. Remind us, Lord God, that God said himself, Behold, I'm a, I am doing a new thing. Do you not see it? Make us be the ones that help people to see see it. Even the ones, even the people, Lord God, whom we would rather not even talk to. This is the time, Lord God. This is the time for us to be your prophet. So give us the blessed assurance that makes us understand and believe that you hear us, you see us, you know us, you understand the difficulty, and yet you understand that at the end of the day, what we desire most is to make you smile. Thank you, God, for being God all by yourself. And let the people of God say amen and amen. God bless you. God keep you. Thank you for being with us, and we'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you for tuning in today. Here at CFM, our mission involves us doing direct service in the name of fighting oppression and educating communities about ways in which we can attain justice and harness our power. CFM is able to do what we do because of your support, and we are so thankful that you support us. Yeah, and still, we're always looking for more help because we are a small ministry looking to make a big impact in our community. If you want to be a part of this important work, you can email us at crazyfaith2019 at gmail.com for more information. Join us tomorrow, November 16th, and every Monday for Bible study. Take a dive into the Word, get inspiration from the message, and explore tough questions with us. Our sock drive is ongoing and we are working towards 2020 pairs of socks for the homeless. Click on the link in the description box below to visit our sock web store to pay just $1 a pair. We are in the holiday season and in addition to collecting socks, we also are collecting toys for our Angel Tree program in which we purchase gifts for children of incarcerated parents. Although the children are here in Ohio, you can purchase gifts from wherever you are located and mail it to us. Because we are still in the midst of our pandemic, we are also collecting hand sanitizer and masks. If you would like to donate either toys or hand sanitizer and masks or help with socks, please email us, crazyfaith2019 at gmail.com. If you want to help us in our outreach efforts, you can donate through Venmo or Cash App or through our website. Our Venmo is at crazy-faith. Our Cash App is Red Dip, And our website is www.crazyfaithministries.org. For those who may not be on Facebook but want to see a playback of our service, you can visit our church online platform at crazyfaithministries.online.church. Thank you for tuning in today. We always appreciate you and we hope that you continue to embody our motto and that we have come to worship and we leave to serve. Everybody have a wonderful week. Bye.